got you. I can hear you. Got us. And we hear hear you. Look at this. We did it. (laughs) Look at us. Just a couple of old people figuring out technology. I love it. Oh, I'm so bad. I used to be the guy (laughs) to help other people with technology. Now I'm the guy texting other people saying, please help me. (laughs) (laughs) But you can still navigate your VHS player, right? Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, I'm the worst. I'm so sorry. Hey, uh, no, we so... really appreciate you trying to squeeze us in here. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, do you have 30 I... minutes, 40 minutes? Like, or yes. Is... yes. Yes. Okay. 100%. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You've well, got my undivided attention. Sounds good. We'll uh, right we are live it. on YouTube right now. We have a few dozen people in the live chat. So Scott's going to oh, leave awesome. most, most of the interview. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on the live chat for comments and questions. And, cool. Uh, we'll get to those as we go or towards the end. So Scott, okay. you're good to go. Chris, yeah, we'll give you we'll give you an intro here. We're very excited for today's guest, sports that producer and content creator Chris Black. Welcome to the Walk Off, buddy. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate the invite. Um, it's been a uh, very cool season, kind of interacting with people uh, on Twitter. The Jay's, I really, really enjoy Jay's Twitter. Like Twitter gets Twitter gets <laughs> slagged for like negativity and mm-hmm. and all that. I don't like subscribe to that theory. If you follow the right people and you're there for, I'm going to borrow a, a bachelor term. If you're there for the right reasons, um, yeah. uh, I, I think it's a great place. I think there's a ton of smart people and it, it's a great way to like, it's a great thing to have on when they, when there's a game going on, there's a lot of smart people talking about baseball. I agree a hundred percent. I love Jay's Twitter. And by the way, man, I love your Twitter account. I truly do. It's Excellent. one of my favorites for those, for those on YouTube right now who aren't following at down to black, do yourself a favor and do so. You're just so good buddy at uh, like digging up stats and analytics that maybe get overlooked or are intentionally missed. And then you highlight certain players and team trends. It's awesome, man. Well done. Thanks. I re- I really appreciate it. Um, I try to. I'm not smart enough to be pure, pure, like hardcore analytics. And I think I kind of have been around the game long enough. I've played it my whole life. Um, where like I think I can kind of balance between kind of that in between space of no numbers and crazy numbers. So um, yes, it's uh, and it's the the one thing I learned in the last like couple of years is just like. Most of it is stuff that I'm going to put on my shows anyways. Like it's, it's just putting my research on a social platform. And if people find it interesting, great, but like it's stuff I find interesting and it's stuff I'm going to be doing in my work. So if people want to see it, then uh, by all means they can dive into it too. There's so many of them that stood out to me, like Jose Barrios. Let's, let's talk Jose Barrios for a quick second (laughs) here because we need you As Jays fans here, we need you to talk us off the ledge, Chris. (laughs) Tell us why this season is just a blip and that this contract is going to work out. Put us at ease. Can you do that? Uh, (laughs) Probably not. Um, I don't love long-term contracts for pitchers. Um, So seven years felt long from the get-go. But if you were going to go long-term contract with somebody – Somebody like Jose Barrios, like, would have made sense. Um, somebody with a great work ethic, somebody who's never been hurt. Um, so, so have my nervousness aside, like, that would have been the guy to go long term with. Um, I do think uh, the Barrios conversations there, I'm gonna, the Barrios conversations on Twitter are one of the most tiring things <laughs> on Blue Jays yes. Twitter. I will say that. Um, I do. I don't think he's been. I feel like when people say he's been the worst pitcher in baseball or one of the worst, when they use the qualified ERA thing, I think that's being, um, uh, what's the, you're being like a, intentionally obtuse is a term that yes. I use a lot. Like, like there's 40 guys who have qualified for the ERA title. Like the ERA title is like an old, um, decrepit way of, of, kind of classifying pitchers nowadays. There's just, there's not enough. I don't think he's been one of the worst pitchers in baseball this year. I don't think that's true. I think he's been strangely, strangely bad in a quarter of his starts. And he's been pretty good in the other 
three quarters, 70%, whatever you want to call it. So, uh, um, which infuriates weird. people on Twitter to hear, doesn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah. And it's, <laughs> but you know what? Like, he is infuriating. I get that. Um, because you, you can see how good he can be. Um, but I think it's a strange, it's a very strange season. And I pulled up the other day, I pulled up, uh, something like an ERA as high as his with, X amount of qual with as many quality starts as he has. And it's like literally There's five like or six five guys. <laughs> yeah. In MLB history. So it's yeah. super, super strange. Um, I still think there's like the fact that the velo's not dropping um is is kind of to me something's it's a guess. It's not, it's a totally, total guess. But I think there's something going on. Like we'll find out in the off season, he had his knee scopes or something. Maybe it's a like I don't think it's a, like sorry. I should say I'm I'm crossing my fingers that it's not arm related. Um, though I've somebody said about I remember, health too. It's hard not to wonder about health when you look. At yeah, because normally you Except, know like the guy. A guy like the the back of the baseball card, right? Like for his age and the amount of seasons that he's put in, you normally can trust that. But this season's been such an outlier. Well, somebody said we. I remember when he signed the contract. Somebody said, "Well, he's never had arm trouble," and my response was, "Is that a good thing?" Like, yeah, right. <laughs> almost like you want to get guys after their TJ, because I like, and I'm not like again. I don't. I have nothing to base this off of, but I just, I'm not sure with pit with how often pitchers are hurt nowadays. I'm not sure never having been hurt before is like a comforting <laughs> feeling, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping the off season it's like he had his knee scoped or he had an oblique thing or it's something not arm related. And maybe, maybe he gets back to being uh, the dependable guy that, that we know. But right before you joined us, we were talking about the off season and just the fact that Hinjin Ryu obviously probably out the full season next next year going through TJ Kikuchi we don't need to get into him but there's question marks all over that Mitch White is the same Ross Stripling going to free agency most likely unless they qualify offer him and we were just talking about if if they should qualify him or not we're kind of leaning that I would almost rather them qualify him, overpay five, six million a year, but know what you're getting. And if he walks, he walks, right? Yeah, maybe. Yep. Do you think this team is going to be pretty active in free agency when it comes to the pitching market? Or do you think this is a correction that they're going to go about with? And we can even tie in roster construction with this and where the DH spot is and how much time both Springer and Kirk kind of need at it. Can you see this roster construction being tweaked? And can you see this happening through trade, maybe bolstering their pitching? Um, yeah, I I think it will be hard to spend money in free agency. Um, it kind of reminds me of like the last year or two was the equivalent of an NFL team having a good quarterback on a rookie deal. So this was when they could kind of go out and get George Springer and go in and get Hunjin Ryu and sign Brios to that extension um, when all these other guys were not making big money. Um, I think Vladdy starts to get expensive. I think Bo starts to get expensive. Uh, Teo's in arbitration. Um, mm -hmm. I think Romano might go into arbitration this year. Um, but this, the, the, the decisions, uh, start to get tougher starting next year. Like this is no longer like, uh, an upstart team with a tiny payroll and you can add guys and it's all good. And like now there's like opportunity costs and decisions that need to be made of do you need to move this guy to bring in? this guy and do you need to as you said kind of change the mix in terms of roster construction so i don't think they're going to be active in free agency i could i could be wrong um i think likelier is that they're active in trades because i do think i do think that they've got outside of the dodgers they've got the deepest offense in baseball um mm -hmm. 
So I think you could make some moves. Addition by subtraction type of idea, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that would be where I would think the avenue, the first path that they look down in the offseason. Do you think that the with the expanded playoffs and we saw that the the price tag seemed to be so much higher at this trade deadline. Do you think that affects the Blue Jays' plans in the off season? You know, because the Blue Jays have maybe not the most appealing farm system. We don't have a lot of AAA kind of push and being ready guys that can be traded. Yeah, um, I first of all, I to like I pushed back a little bit on that okay. during around the trade deadline. They like. They've got it's like it's something we brought up during the Orioles series the other day when they were talking about how great Adley Rutschman is and going going crazy about him. Like Kirk, Bichette, Vladdy, they're all younger. All younger. Yeah. Yeah. So like, (laughs) yes, like I I you're absolutely right, Adam, in your point in that, yeah, they don't have a bunch of like arms at triple A that teams are, you know, diet that they really want. Um but again, like they've moved up a lot of guys. So your farm system is naturally going to go down the rankings a little bit. Um, they've traded guys in the last few years, first rounders and stuff. That's naturally going to push you down. Um, I am a huge, huge Tiedemann guy, like as I think many of us are who watch the uh, who watch the grainy minor league footage. Um, <laughs> I spoke to Addison Barger uh, this past weekend Again, all us like kind of Twitter nerds are kind of getting excited about him too. Um, mm-hmm. He he really excites me. So I I think they've got pieces that could potentially like. Are they ready in April next year? Probably not. Um, but could they be contributors by late next year? Maybe I don't know. Um, but yeah, I I do think the prices were weird. Um, this you think past it's the same off this season? season, maybe. Um, but I think you gotta, I think it's easier to make the kind of roster mix trades, um, in the off season. Like I think in, I think at the deadline, it's like, here are your X sellers, X amount of sellers, here are your Y amount of buyers. And it's, it's, that's the interaction. Mm -hmm. Whereas come off season, you can, you can kind of call up any team you want and figure out if there's a fit. So we were talking about this right before you joined us, Chris, just the, and Tiedemann was a big part of this talk as to why maybe offering Ross Stripling a qualifying offer is a smart move. Just that Ricky Tiedemann is, is 20 years old, despite how much he has excelled in this 2022 season. This is only his first full-time professional season when it comes to playing baseball and he hasn't hit triple a yet. So maybe at 20 years old, to have zero pressure on him and and I, I'm not even saying don't bring him up if he's knocking on the door but at least giving Ross Stripling that one year deal gives a little bit of breathing room right it, it doesn't make it so you're like oh man we need Tiedemann to work out quite like they were with Manoa even though Manoa worked out great yeah um, Manoa obviously different with the years of college pitching um, that he had in his back pocket when he went to the minors um, and three I years also makes think, a difference, right? Like the fact he was 23 instead of 20, there is a difference there. Yeah. And I just think he's a bit of a, uh, it's an overused term, especially for the way that it's supposed to be used, but he's a bit of a unicorn just in terms of like, he understands pitching like as well as any young pitcher I've ever seen. Like when you hear him talk, I remember it would have been, I can't, when did he come up? May last year. I started paying attention to him kind of in April, um, like early on in that season, especially when they were having starting pitching troubles. And I started listening to some of his like post game interviews um, and just hearing this kid talking about how he wanted to get his fastball moving in different ways to attack different hitters and yada, yada, yada. And all the stuff that we hear and see now, like especially that all star and he was mic'd up and just hearing the way this guy understands pitching, the way he can perfectly communicate what he wants to do. Like there, it sounds simple and it sounds like I'm like making a big deal out of something, 
but not every kid talks like this. And these guys are kids. Like these guys are young and like it, it's extremely, extremely rare to have somebody that young understand pitching and be able to talk about it um, in such a smart way. So I, I, he's different. Um, I did look up, Tiedemann's in his age 20 season this year or is it age 19? Mm -hmm. Why well, either or like he just turned to come 20. up. Yeah. So like he'll be in his age 20 or age 21 season next year. And there's a small, small list of, of people who actually come up and contribute at that age. So I think the likelier scenario for him is probably a full season of AAA next year. Maybe he comes up to be like a power lefty late in the year, but I don't think we can really count on him to really give this team much in 23. I think anything you get from him is like a, a cherry on top at the major league level next year.